Thank you for joining us today. We are delighted to have Andrew Young, the director of Wings Over Water here with us. And uh, Andrew, first of all, thank you for joining us uh, here for this uh, live, well, I say live, this recorded conversation that uh, people will be watching to get some new insights into this giant screen film that just started playing here at the Tennessee Aquarium IMAX 3D Theater. Thank you for joining us. It is my pleasure. I am so excited that uh, you guys are showing Wings Over Water. I was able to go and see a screening of the movie uh, last week, but uh, so I know what the film's about, obviously I've seen it, but uh, walk me through the origins of Wings Over Water. This is not about one of the kind of go-to places people tend to think about when it comes to uh, filming wildlife. You know, this isn't the Amazon or the Great Barrier Reef or, or Yellowstone, even if we're talking about North American locations. How did the notion of a film focused on North America's uh, prairie wetlands come about? Yeah, that's a great question. And that's really, this, one of the central reasons behind why this region was chosen to make a film is that nobody knows about it, and yet it's incredibly significant. So we had finished our previous film, The Wild Around You, which you guys also showed, at, which was really about the ecosystem in our backyard, you know, the hidden wonders of nature around where we lived, around where so many of us live in, uh, in the eastern U.S. And we we were contacted by um, actually a producer who was working for IMAX because they knew some folks at a place called the Max McGraw Wildlife Foundation, which is a group out of Chicago. And they, um, their mission is to protect this incredible ecosystem called the Prairie Wetlands. And they felt that an IMAX film would be the best way to sort of enlighten people as to why this area was so critical. So, um, and I have to say that when we were asked to do this film, we didn't know anything about it. Prairie wetlands, uh, also known as the prairie pothole region, sounds like a place you don't want to drive your car, you know. <laughs> I didn't know anything about it, but after doing some research and going there, I was completely blown away. And, you know, you mentioned the Amazon as like a place, that, of course, that everybody would think about as one of the most important freshwater resources on the planet. I, I like to think of the prairie wetlands as North America's Amazon because it contains so much water, but nobody notices it because the water is not in one place. It's not a gigantic river. It's not like the Great Lakes. It's like literally millions of tiny wetlands and ponds. And it's not until you go there during the breeding season of birds that you realize the significance of lots of small wetlands. Basically, it creates nesting habitat for like half of all the water loving birds in our continent. So as far as an ecosystem that is critical to North America, the prairie wetlands ranks right up there at the very top. Breeding uh, location for literally millions and millions of birds. The film is eye-opening in a lot of different ways, but one of the things that's most interesting about it, especially living as uh, we do here in Chattanooga on the eastern side of the Mississippi, and I guess you as well, I, there is a tendency to think of um, the Great Plains as being very sort of uniform and flat, and and the film really shows that that is just not at all the case. There's a lot of uh, topographic diversity in terms, and also in addition to the wildlife diversity. Yeah, um, and I had the same conception about it, you know, the Great Plains as just being pretty flat grasslands with not a lot of diversity, and it was so eye-opening. What's interesting about it is um, the region of the prairie wetlands, and, and this is an ecosystem that was formed by the melting of the glaciers, and it created a landscape of kind of shallow rolling hills. It's not a dramatic, you know, with mountains or anything like that. It's rolling hills and there's just enough relief in the ground to conceal what lies amongst the hills. You really can't see it and appreciate it until you get up in the air. And I remember the first time we flew our drone up to capture some of the landscape, all of a sudden, once we got up above 100 feet, you started seeing that we were surrounded by thousands of ponds in every direction. You can't really see that from the ground. You look out and it looks like uh, just grasslands because the hills all hide what's lying in the valleys in between, which is the water. And I, I think that's what 
it, you know, kind of makes the place mysterious. And for me, uh, you know, made it underappreciated until I had that aha moment of rising up and seeing how much water there was. And, and as I said before, the fact that all these little ponds are so small, it creates perfect breeding habitat for, uh, for migratory birds, particularly waterfowl, because they're territorial and, uh, you know, on a, on a huge body of water, you only have the, the shore is the place where the, you know, birds aren't nesting out in the middle of a lake or something. They all use the shore or the wetlands regions. And when you have small ponds, you have much more surface area than in a single large lake. So, you know, the Great Lakes are an impressive volume of water, but the prairie wetlands have far more breeding habitat for migratory birds because they're so small. You mentioned the the drone, uh, and I think there when you talk about a film that's focused so um, predominantly about avian, so about about birds, you you might think that a drone would be one of your most useful storytelling tools. I'm sure it is, yeah. but one of the things that's so interesting about this film, in addition to uh, one of the things that I loved about uh, the wild around you, is that you and your team uh, offer some really novel and unexpected perspectives on wildlife. You get uh, to see them from angles and uh, at a and, and proximity that you probably would not have expected or have ever seen before. Uh, so talk a little bit about some of the other tools that you utilize to tell this story. Sure. I mean, I loved going to IMAX films when I was a kid um, because of the experience, the immersive experience it gave uh, me. And so my challenge with with these films is to, I want to give the audience a, an experience they'll never forget. And um, especially with, uh, you know, either the wild around you was the, the, about the animals that we all sort of take for granted because they live so close to us. And so I knew I had to show people a new side of these animals that they'd never seen before or in ways they'd never seen. Same thing with um, showing the prairie wetlands and wings over water. Um, I knew that it was an ecosystem that wasn't going to, uh, it's not like the Serengeti or the Amazon where people have heard about it and they, you know, they're, they may be uh, really interested in seeing a film because they know there are these, these big impressive animals there. We had the, you know, the opposite challenge. This was a place that nobody knew anything about and we weren't sure how interested people were going to be. So that really raises the bar in terms of what, what we were willing to do to really blow people away with this, with uh, with the prairie wetlands, and I feel like we did. It, it took it just took a lot of time how to bring people into that world. And you were asking about what kind of equipment we used. I mean, we used a drone. We uh, we used boats and ultralights. We actually had birds that were um, rehab birds that were couldn't live in the wild that were actually trained to follow us. Um, and that's how we got some of the incredible shots, because if you're going to, you know, do right for by 3D and really kind of knock the socks off your audience, you've got to get the camera really close to the subject. And so we knew we were only going to be able to get so close to wild birds, although we did do a lot with wild birds using remote control cameras when it came to flying uh, using ultralights or, or boats driving along rivers we needed birds that would fly right alongside us. And that's what we had. Um, we, we, had a, um, we had a flock of geese, we had sandhill cranes, um, a flock of mallards that were all imprinted to follow our bird trainer and um, allow me to literally be right alongside them while they were flying. And that's what made, um, you know, I really wanted to give people the experience of migrating with these birds because the, the story is not just about the prairie wetlands, it's about the journey that these birds have to make in order to get there. And um, we follow three different birds, um, a yellow warbler, a sandhill crane, and a mallard duck for each from their wintering grounds to the prairie wetlands. And they all have incredible challenges just to make that journey. Like the little, the tiny little warbler has to cross the Gulf of Mexico. And sometimes they encounter storms, you know, so they're flying all night across the ocean. And what's it like when, you know, suddenly winds change and you're dealing with a huge thunderstorm. Um, and so we want to give the audience that experience. 
that is a really harrowing scene uh the yellow warbler flying through the storm and i, I loved the the moment or the the narration that really stuck out to me there was how do you navigate these winds or imagine navigating these winds uh, while also weighing only as much as I think three sheets of paper. That's right. To give yeah. you perspective. I mean, you can't imagine uh, keeping a straight line, even in a, in a gentle breeze, much less a, a hurricane gale. I think, you know, the amazing thing about birds, we're just coming to understand the incredible things that they do and the role that they play in ecosystems. And I think that the I think of the prairie wetlands as being sort of North America's backyard. And it's the ecosystem that we all rely on and that we're all connected to, even if we don't live near it. And that's because of the role that birds play. They're migrating. So many of them are going there um, and then going back to their wintering grounds. They're moving nutrients around by eating food in one place and pooping it somewhere else. It, it, it uh, gives nutrients back to the land, uh, to the water. Um, they enrich ecosystems in all of the places that they stop along, both in terms of um, the things that they eat and the things that eat them. So they're major players in our ecosystems and in our water quality. Um, and I think we, we hardly give them that appreciation. And then you take a diminutive creature like the yellow warbler, like you said, just three weighs as much as three pieces of paper. And you think, you know, what this little creature has to do. And um, so the, the, I think the challenge for me with telling this story was to, to really give people the experience of how important these animals were and what it was like to be them and go on these journeys. Uh, one of our, our experts here at the aquarium likes to say that people tend to focus uh, on wildlife in terms of the, the vertebrates that they want to see or the big, you know, the big flashy ones, and they neglect or they forget that they're surrounded literally all the time by these amazing vertebrates and, and the hundreds of bird species that call this continent home. And I think the one thing the film really does well is kind of give you, uh, as you were mentioning, kind of some perspective on the important role they play and really an insight into the, the, the hidden life of birds. Yeah, absolutely. And we purposefully chose some common birds that, that a lot of people in the audience can relate to. I mean, almost everybody has seen a mallard duck somewhere because they, you know, have such a wide range. And yet, you know, probably few of us have stopped to consider what the life of the mallard duck is like. And so, you know, we take you to the flooded forest in Arkansas where so many mallards uh, overwinter, uh, while, you know, and feed on acorns that have been submerged in the flooded forest uh, underwater, give them a glimpse of what that is like. Um, and then upon arriving to the prairie wetlands, just how difficult it is to safely raise a clutch of eggs, um, you know, ducklings out when you have to hide your nest out in a grass field where you're exposed to predators. You know, and so we try to bring that home to people so that the next time you are walking in the park and you see a mallard duck, you're like, hmm, okay, I know what you go through. <laughs> you know, try to give people a little more appreciation. And the, also the yellow warbler is a, you know, is a bird that you can see in, a, uh, in many places around the U.S., even in, in city parks and places like that. Uh, the sandhill cranes may be a little bit more exotic, but if you live in the Southwest, you might uh, or in the Midwest, you might be familiar with them flying uh, overhead during migratory season. You know, it's funny that you mentioned that because Sandhill Cranes, uh, even here in the Southeast, we're in one of their major flyways. So right. um, yeah, they yeah. come to roost uh, just north of downtown Chattanooga in the Hiawassee Bird Refuge, uh, which is uh, only less than an hour's drive north of here. Uh, right. I've been fortunate enough to go out and see them from a boat. And the noise they make is so, it's almost Jurassic. Uh, which uh, you touch on in the film, actually, I guess the, that uh, they are uh, essentially living fossils. Yeah, and they, they were probably uh, my favorite just because they are such characters and they do feel like a creature out of the past. When they're flying, you know, you it, I just kept thinking pterodactyl. <laughs> they're just yeah. such incredible animals. And, um, and to see them gathered, um, by the tens of thousands along the Platte River, one of their you know big migration stopover places. Um, it's just 
like something I, I've never seen before. I mean, that is the, one of the great wildlife spectacles of the world, you know, sort of on par with the Serengeti or the great bison migration that used to exist in North America, uh, but they're still doing it. Maybe not in as great numbers, but you know, you, you could find tens and tens of thousands of them uh, gathering along the Platte River and uh, it's an amazing sight and sound. But you, you mentioned, uh, to go back just a second, you mentioned uh, bird poop for one thing. Yeah. Uh, there's a scene in the in the film that uh, I, I really like that maybe it's just me being uh, a man child, but I loved uh, the the sequence focusing on, on bird poop. And a large part of that appeal really was um, the, the use of 3D and kind of conveying that. In fact, I can tell you uh, from watching the audience that that moment uh, really lands uh, the 3D elements of that really land. Uh, not, you also mentioned uh, the ducks going after the acorns. It's another moment that really leverages that use of 3D uh, with yeah. a duck bill coming after that acorn right into your face. Talk a little bit about uh, your um, philosophy, I guess, when it comes to making films you know, for IMAX, for, for, with 3D as the format that it's going to be presented in. How do you think about 3D in terms of how it can amplify your storytelling? I love 3D uh, for educational storytelling, because I, I think, you know, to learn about things, you have to see them in a fresh way. You know, it's almost like I've got to show people a duck feeding almost as if they've never seen it before in a way that feels like it's the first time you've ever seen this. And for me, I go on a journey where I just try to put myself into their world. Um, you know, one of the first times I was in the prairie wetlands and I, um, I dipped a, a jar into a pond and lifted it up. It was just so filled with tiny organisms that I couldn't believe it. And I said, okay, that's where I'm going. That's where I have to take the audience. We have to shrink down and get into that world of, of tiny creatures. That's where the, the hidden wealth is of this ecosystem. And that's why all the birds are coming there because there's this incredible food source in the ponds. I mean, I mentioned that it has the surface area and great places for nesting, but it also has the food. And so, okay, if you think, all right, let's get underwater, let's get under those little creatures, um, these, uh, you know, tiny insect, larval insects and other creatures like that and experience a giant, duck head coming down and snapping at us, all of a sudden you've got an exciting situation to put the audience in. And that is a, you know, that's a teachable moment. That, that's seeing something for the first time, not just being told, you know, that there's rich food there, but experiencing it because then it doesn't feel like you're learning. It's just like, you're, you're seeing something amazing. You're just, you're experiencing something. That's the way I love to tell stories. And so I think, Wings Over Water was a journey for me of how to put the audience in those different ex situations where they would actually experience something. Well, Andrew Young, I think that uh, is about as much time as I want to take up of yours, but thank you so much for uh, taking time out of your schedule to fill us in a little bit on the backstory of this film, Wings Over Water, and uh, walking us through the efforts that you took to, to convey that story on the giant screen. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. It was a pleasure talking to you. I, I hope people can can come out and have this really rich experience. Um, so thanks for showing the film. Vital to millions of birds. Fly alongside the epic migrations of these remarkable creatures as they return home to raise the next generation. Is this real life or make believe? You are the wind underneath my wings You got me higher than I've ever been When I'm with you, I'm flying When I'm with you, I'm flying Meet the diverse wildlife that all play a part in this bountiful ecosystem When I'm with you, I'm flying Join the inspiring people working to protect it. When I'm with you, I'm Soar across the prairie wetlands and learn why we all need wide open spaces to spread our wings.
Narrated by me, 